Hey, right. So um, let me just do a little bit of an introduction, if you like, to me so that you know who I am. And then we can talk a little bit more about uh, what I'm going to try and talk to you about today, which is this concept that I've been talking to some businesses about, really, about what I call the entrepreneurial business glass ceiling, very similar to the sort of the glass ceiling we all hear about in terms of sort of career growth. But this is the sort of glass ceiling a business owner reaches because they haven't got the same sort of career limitations, uh, but they do have limitations. So um, who am I? Why Why would you even bother to listen to some guy on a what seems like a very wet, windy Tuesday afternoon? Um, this is me. Um, obviously, um, some years ago, um, and many hundreds of pounds ago, uh, in my in my youth when I was a scientist, um, and that's the background that I come from. I was a I was a scientist in various universities. This one was taken whilst I was doing one of my research degrees, <clears throat> and um, uh, what I used to research involved me having to do very structured experiments in order to be able to ensure that I could repeat what I learned and make sure I could sort of do it again and again. And I eventually realized that, that being a scientist in the world of sort of academia, building laboratories and such like wasn't really what I was going to enjoy. And I, I left in order to develop a business career by starting some businesses and, and working for some large corporate clients. And I thought that my training uh, to become a scientific mind in order to sort of do this research process to understand the scientific method would not serve me well in my in my entrepreneurial career. So I threw it away for a few years. And then I realized I was actually having difficulty building some of the businesses I was working with because I thought that I had to sort of, you know, uh, do things in a spontaneous way. And I actually learned that that was actually really inhibiting the growth of the businesses that I was working with. Um, and I came back and I reevaluated what I was doing in terms of my scientific thinking. And I then proceeded to be able to actually grow one of my businesses to over 600 people. And one of the reasons I did that is because I implemented what I called and still sort of call and teach with, with various uh, um, business owners now, uh, the scientific business value building machine. Bit of a mouthful, but it basically what it is, is a way of taking five steps and implementing them into your business. And I'm not going to talk too much about what each of those steps are today. I've done some other masterclasses on some of those, those steps. But what I'm trying to do is take you through the fact that you have got to install a machine, a bit like a scientist does for their experiment into your business. You have got to think like this thing, this business that you're building is somehow outside of yourself. It is a separate entity. It is not you. You are uh, an operator of this. You're feeding it. You're doing some things in order to sort of mush, to, to, to optimize it. But this is not you. You are the person that has to actually install this machine into the business and then let it run. And there are five, five, five steps. And I, I will very briefly touch upon what those five things are because they're important. They are the fact that you have to have a vision. Uh, you have to have a lead generation system. You have to have repeatable excellence. You have to have a team that is cohesive and that will lead eventually to profit momentum. And that's the thing which actually builds your business and builds the value that you as a business owner can, can use. So what is it that I therefore am talking about in this entrepreneurial glass ceiling? Well, as I said, most of the people think about what an entrepreneurial glass ceiling is, is it's that thing that stops them progressing in their career. For women, it's often the fact that they are female and they're unable to progress. For other people, it's their youth or it's the fact that they were from the wrong side of the tracks or whatever. It's this thing that stops them progressing. But for a business owner, there's nothing really that should stop them apart from these three things, which actually you'll find most business owners find themselves unable to grow their business because they're overwhelmed. They're swamped day to day operations. They're absolutely bogged down in what's going on. There's often chaos around them because they haven't built these systems that I've talked about. I can attest to this because one of the first businesses I did, I almost physically stopped trying to build systems because I believe it was the wrong thing to do. 
and it was chaotic. In fact, we never really got that business to grow because it was just chaotic and it stagnated. It was unable to grow because at the end of the day, the thing that was stopping it growing was the fact that everything came through me. As the business owner, literally everything went through what I was doing. And as a result, when I wasn't there, or if if I wasn't able to answer a question, everything came to a halt. So it's very common that business owners sort of see themselves going, this business isn't growing. I can't understand why it's not growing. It's all chaos around here. Nothing's working. Uh, I'm overwhelmed with work. And this is just chaos. And the reason is that the business owner has to rethink what their job is. Most business owners, when they start, are technicians. They're the skilled workers focusing on their trade. They're very good at what they do and they know how to do it. And that's the reason they've got their business growing is because they're very good at it. A few manage to move into the next stage, which is still still far too start far too limited they're the manager they now see this as the manager of the tasks they still have too many hands in their in their daily operations they're still caught in the details because they're still the person that understands it best but they have at least moved beyond the technician where they're doing it all they're now saying well other people have to do it but i have to take them through it i have to make sure they're doing it properly i have to watch everything they're doing i have to make sure that they're they're doing it the way i do it because if they don't the business will not go well very few eventually make it to the visionary and that's when true breakthrough comes it's when the business owner just understands that they're now actually a strategic leader and innovator. They are no longer at the helm of all of this. They are now the person that is actually looking to the future and trying to decide where the business is going, trying to know exactly where the business will build greatest value, looking for new products, thinking about new ways of doing things and passing all of the day-to-day -day operations on to somebody else. So one of the things I want to implore you to do as business owners is start redefining your role as you build your business. In fact, one of the things that I'm doing with one of my clients, because I do this with businesses on a daily basis, one of the things I'm doing with them at the moment is I'm redefining the role of the business owner and I'm giving them a new job description in exactly the same way as they were when they were at, 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 a, at, a, at their corporate job. And I'm focusing them on four things. The first is that they have to focus on long-term goals and market opportunities. That's what I call strategic planning. They're no longer thinking about the day-to-day. -day. They're now looking six months, 12 months, 18 months into the future and saying, what products should we be producing in 18 months' time? And if they're going to do that, they need to be setting up innovation. They need to be continuously seeking new ways to improve products. They need to be sequen se consequently thinking about ways in which to do things cheaper, better, faster, more cost effectively, more customer focused. I'm inspiring them or I'm asking them to step into an, a role where they're inspiring them to guide their teams towards this shared vision. And I'm telling them to get out there and network, build valuable connections, find joint venture partners that they, can, that they can work with, look around and look for the people who are going to help them to build this business rather than building it themselves. They now have to move all of that onto other people. And effectively, what we've done is we've actually taken this and turned it into a job description because the only way they could actually start to do it was by giving them a job description and saying, that's your job. And I in my role, mentoring them and measuring them against their job description. I'm asking them, what have they done in terms of their strategic planning for the last six months? Where are they trying to take the business? What, what leadership skills are they trying to develop? And they do have holes in their leadership skills. What network have they done? What joint ventures have they tried to set? What people are they working to try and understand how they could work together in partnerships? So, so if you can't sort of naturally sort of take yourself out of this I'm the technician I'm doing anything I'm trying to drive myself and this small team I've built whatever take yourself out and sit down one day and write yourself a job description write a job description which actually says these are the new behaviors these are new skills these are the new things I need to demonstrate in order to be a more effective business leader write them down and start measuring yourself on a regular basis, monthly, six weeks, two months at the outside. How am I doing on my job description this year? 
Am I developing those skills? What other things do I need to do? Okay. One of the things I just mentioned was the fact that in order to be able to do this, of course, they now have to have a vision which they can use to help guide the people that are doing the do whilst they're doing the thinking. So how do we go about crafting that compelling vision? And, and your vision, and, and what I would describe now as the North Star metric, is going to be the thing which is going to you you are going to use to really guide the business. Now, I'll tell you a little bit more about the North Star metric in just a moment, but let's just talk about how we go about crafting a really compelling vision. The first of which is you have to identify why the business exists. Now, it's got to be beyond the point of just making money because that's not enough to drive a business forward. Uh, yes, you do want to make a profit. And we talked about the fact that the scientific value building machine, this thing that I help people get into their business, has to have at the end of it profit momentum. There is a reason for doing it. But if that's the only reason you're in business, you will fail to inspire others in order to come on the journey with you. And then once you understand what the purpose is, and it has to be something beyond money, you have to understand what it is that you're doing in order to sort of be able to serve the customer base, your stakeholders, the people that really care about what your business is about. And you have to be able to use that, that, def that purpose, that, that vision, both internally to inspire your, uh, your staff, to inspire the people that you're working with, to inspire friends, family, whatever else. But you can also use it very effectively in your marketing in order to be able to show, show what your customers, show to them what it is you're doing and what it is you're about. So having a vision is a really important step. Having something like that is a really good way of being able to do not only what it is you're about, but also help to control what's going on within the business. Because if your vision says that we're here to sort of like Amazon says, to be the greatest customer service business in the world, you know how to hire people because they have to have the customer service metric. And you can then sort of say to people outside, we're here to serve you. Okay, so that leads us on to this North Star metric. Now, metrics are a, a, a wild and potentially quite deep subject. So let's just skate over this one a little bit. I implore most business leaders, particularly as they're starting to scale and build their business, to have one particular figure that they are monitoring on a regular basis. And I call it the North Star metric. And the reason it's the North Star metric, a bit like the North Star, you can use it for guiding your business. If you want to sail north, there is a star in the sky, the North Star. It pretty much stays exactly where that where north is. And as long as you're pointed at it, you know which go, where you're going. All you've got to do is find it. It's, it's a big wide open sky. It's often difficult to spot. But as long as you can see it and you know which, where it is, you can point your boat at it and you can sail across a very wide ocean and you're not going to get lost. So you need something similar in your business. You need one number that you can constantly look at and say, are we on track? Now, that could be profit, but it also could be customer satisfaction. It could be number of orders. It could be any one of a number of different things that you can sort of find within your business to measure. But the point is, it needs to be the one that you know that if that one's going in the right direction, number of complaints going down, number of customers going up, profit going up, number of products or pr widgets, whatever you're producing going up. So long as you're producing that number and is doing the right thing, you can say that your business remains on track. Everything else around you could be completely uh, unmeasured, but you've got one number that you can rely upon. And then what I encourage you as business owners to do is to communicate that very clearly internally, externally, and tell everybody what it is you're about. You've got a vision and you now know how to sort of, if you like, measure your vision. So tell everybody because it's a good way of making sure you remain accountable to the thing that you've set as your business growth. The metric then has to be truly relevant. It has to be related to the business success and you use it as the one primary focus of all of your efforts. And if I can employ you to do anything else, use a metric which is going to, as I put it, make you growth oriented. Not something which is going to sort of, you know, you can say, oh, I'm comfortable with that. It's no problem. I can make that one. Makes me feel good that every month I know I'm going to hit that number. Make it something which is going to stretch you a little bit. Make it something which is going to be that thing which goes 
every so often, oh, I am not comfortable this month. I am at least three, four, five, ten 10 points away from that thing. So that is a really good way of keeping yourself grounded and keeping yourself working. Okay, so enough of that, that one of the things I've sort of alluded to in all of what we've said so far is there are other people doing things. And so the one thing that I had to learn was because I wasn't very good at it. And as I said, in the first sort of business I set up, it was complete chaos. Everything was coming through me and I didn't know how to delegate tasks to other people. Now, I often think that as business owners, we are the people who use and choose the path of least assistance we definitely don't get comfortable with this early enough in our time as business owners. So I had eventually, um, uh, there were 600 people, there were, about, there, were, there were about 12 people that I used to have reporting directly to me that managed this 600 person business. Those 12 people were the 12 people that basically I used to get to do all of my work so that all I could do was wander around doing this, this, trying to work out where we're going and spending my time talking to customers and such like. So I had to delegate my work essentially to the 12 people who were going to do the job for me. And one of the things I did is I taught them to delegate to the people that work for them so that everybody down the chain was delegating work until it got to somebody who could actually do it. And what I did is I taught them a four-step process to delegate work. And one of the reasons that I say this so clearly at this stage is because I think most people don't know and they would love to delegate work. Say you don't like doing your own bookkeeping and you'd like to delegate it to somebody to do it. And you just think, I'd love to do it, but I don't know how. As soon as you've got this four-step process, it is so easy to delegate and it is so easy to check that things are still going in the right direction and you feel comfortable they're going in the right direction. But if you don't step follow these four steps, the one thing that I have found is that the four steps are critical to your ability to do this. So let's talk about those four steps. First of all, you have to identify what tasks you are going to delegate. Now, there are certain things which at the moment only you can do. And there are certain that absolutely you can move on to other people. So let's define what those were, those are that don't require your unique set of skills or vision. Once you've understood what those tasks are, the first thing you do is look around and say, who is this going to be the person that I'm going to ask to help me? And that's the way I start. I always start by telling people, you ask for help. You do not say, here's a job, go do it. One of the reasons you have to ask for the help is because you have to make sure they're fully focused on listening to you and they're actually going to want to do this. If they're not willing to do it, it is going to fail. So start by just saying, I need your help. After you've understood that they are listening and they have agreed to help you, you tell them how they're going to do the task. You tell them how you want it to, to, to be, how you, how you know it's done, how you, what is the final result? Let's take a report. I need this report. It has to be reproduced every two weeks. We know it's done because this is the format. Okay. I check it in these ways. I make sure that it contains all of this information. Do you understand all of that? Okay. Now, because this is your first time doing it, you set a short window of review. You don't just say, go away for two weeks, produce a report, let's hope it works, okay? Thanks very much, because that is the route to success. What you do is you give them a, why don't you go and look at past reports and then produce the first, let's say it's got a series of numbers in it, the first number plus the commentary for that first number. And come back to me in two days' time when you've done that and we'll review what you found about doing that part of the task. So after two days, you can check with them. Have you done that? Yes, I've done it. Okay, how did it go? Didn't understand this. I didn't understand how to produce this number. Terrific. Now I'm going to help you by coaching you on how I go about producing that number or producing that paragraph or whatever in order for you to understand the process better. Okay, now you've got the first part of that done. Move on to the second part. Use the process that we've just discussed. And then you go on until such time as they produce it. So the first time they produce it, lots of very short reviews, lots of very short time scales, constant review. 
Second time they do it, you go, okay, you've a little more experience now. Go away for a week. Tell me how you are after the first week. Come back to me and talk to me about what you've managed to learn, how you found it. And we'll review, once again, any failings or any things that are prevent preventing you from completing the task. Third or fourth time, you can basically just delegate this. You know how to produce this report. Go produce the report. Tell me when it's done. Now, two things that are very clear in what I've just said to you. One, as you get more, as they get more confident, you get more confident, you can just leave them to it. But the task is only complete when they report it. You cannot at any stage just say, guys, just go ahead and do it. Don't bother to refer to me. You still have to say to them, tell me when it is delivered, because I need to know that there are no problems. And you cannot just leave it until the very last minute. You have to have short reviews to make sure that things are staying on track. Now, once you've done that and you've done it once, you can release that into the world. And at that point, you can allow them to get on and do their job. I did this with, with my managers. I've done it with, with many managers now. And the one time that I have found that everybody has failed to get this to work well is when they leave those reviews far too long and they allow that review process to, 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 to be too long. If you have a task which takes a month and you just check in with somebody three weeks after you give it to them and say, how are you getting on? You will find they start it that day and a month long task is suddenly compressed into a week. You must make the review process short you've got to make it easy and you've got to allow them to come back to you with questions all the time so that's how i built my delegation process it's now been rolled out i, I rolled it out to that company that i built i rolled it out to hundreds of managers now and in every single case the one thing that i've heard of them when they come back to me and say I had no idea how revolutionary this would be. I am suddenly free of all sorts of things that I knew I could let go of and other people could do. You'll also find that other people, when they get hold of this, are absolutely delighted they've been allowed to get on with something that they thought, I don't know why it is I'm not doing that because I'm better at it than they are. And I absolutely agree. There are certain things which I am just absolutely dreadful at and I'm much better letting those go. So delegation. Let's just talk about the, the next thing, which I just want to um, get you up to speed on, and then I can take some questions or whatever. So systems for scale. Systems are absolutely the key thing which allow you to scale. And in your business, by having a process documented or by having a, um, uh, a, um, a, a, a series of documents which actually document how the work is done, you will increase the value of your business by at least two or three times. So you have got to have documented processes. You've got to automate as much as you possibly can. You need to create clear step-by-step -step guidelines for people to follow for all of the business operations that you are currently doing in your business. By having that process documented, you will enable to enable yourself to get to the stage. If you ever want to sell your business, it becomes something which somebody else can buy because they know how it works. Unless they've got an idea of how it works, they can't possibly take it off your hands because you're still at the middle of it. As much as possible, you need to have software that is going to automate repetitive tasks. Why? We talk a lot about AI and things like that. It's not about that. It's about the fact that unfortunately, Software just doesn't make as many failures as human beings do. They don't, software for many reasons doesn't lose concentration halfway through a task. So you do need to actually make sure that your business is built upon things which are going to be able to do things when there are nobody there. You need to have pieces of, pieces of software at work when you're asleep. And it also helps to really standardize quality because once again, in order to build a really repeatable system, your system has to be repeatable and done in exactly the same way because you can then let your customers know that your product will always come out, whether it be a mortgage application or a widget, it will always come out to a standard which you can guarantee. 
Now, the thing that I will say for this is the one great thing that you need to do behind all of that with, with people working is train them continuously in order to get them to be able to do this, uh, this, this job of keeping the business um, documented, to, to constantly be training them to do things better, faster, quicker. And that it comes with, with some cost but you will find that those costs are far less than the processes of getting people to do that job without any of those supporting systems. Okay, so that those are the ways to break through these, this entrepreneurial glass ceiling because what we're trying to do is trying to move beyond the, 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 the overwhelm, the chaos, the stagnation which comes from a business which runs through one person and one person that is unable to sort of cope with anything too much because there's only eight hours, well, 24 hours in a day if you don't sleep, but only eight hours working when you're going to be working with, with, with others, customers, suppliers, whatever. And that way you will always find that you are in a strict system that is overwhelmed, chaotic, and growth will stagnate. And the way that I'm talking to you about Moving beyond that is to write yourself a job description, which puts you back into the visionary, the leader, the person that's charting the course rather than the person that's doing. Set up measurement systems, set up that North Star and a vision so that you can tell if your business is on track. Learn to delegate. And that delegation process that I saw is, is one that I've rolled out to many hundreds of managers. And so long as they take it and work with it and take the feedback and give feedback as they are as they're training people to, to work through their delegation it has been 100 successful and then use systems to truly enable you to scale that uh, are the four steps that i have found and i am currently working with a number of businesses who are breaking through the glass ceiling and those four steps are the ones that we're rolling out and each one of them is breaking down that overwhelmed chaos, stagnation. I'll give you a very real example. There's one guy that I'm working with who uh, started a business. It was, um, it was very, very stagnant. He has a brilliant idea. It is to put a solution on the inside of a window, which actually stops the heat from coming through. And it was a quite brilliant <clears throat> solution. He was unable to really get the business going. Since I've started working with him, we now have got that uh, company grown to a size of 50. He's got a distributor in the US, in the southern part of the US, um, in Florida. They've got their first installation of this solution in a hotel in a Florida, in the in the Florida Keys. Uh, and that, that hotel chain is now asking for that product, which we, means he's now training a bunch of installers in Florida and starting to look for more installers out in, in the Southern United States. Now you can imagine this has meant he's had to um, let people do the, uh, the application and, and produce a manual which says this is how you apply it. We've had to work to get a manufacturer in order to be able to produce the volume because the manufacturing process he had was too small. And his job is now looking around and saying, okay, what's next for this product? What are we gonna do next? And that has released a huge amount of potential. And as you can imagine, in a, in a world where we're trying to drive down carbon, those rooms at that hotel, hotel in Florida and that, that, that hotel chain will be taking forward will no longer need the massive amount of air conditioning they were using to keep those rooms cool, which is a huge benefit. But none of that would have happened if he hadn't gone through this four-step process where he, basically we, we, we worked to make sure he was the innovator. We'd got a, a North Star metric, which you're now using to measure how the company grows. He's learned how to delegate to people. And there are now systems and, 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 uh, and workflow in place in order to scale that business so that effectively he can step back and the business will run largely without him having to be all over it all of the time. Okay, that's probably enough for me. There's about half an hour, and I know there are probably one or two questions. So um, I don't know. How do we want?